In this first session on Facebook, we talk about creating Facebook pages, the Facebook page timeline, and the Facebook page header area. It's important to understand the difference between a Facebook profile and a Facebook page. A Facebook profile is for you or a representative of your organization. In other words, it's for people. A Facebook page is a way for you to represent your business or organization on Facebook. Never create a profile for a business. That is what Facebook pages are for. When we talk about Facebook in this course, we're going to be talking about Facebook pages as opposed to profiles. Since Facebook profiles really are about uh, social networking and should be something personal for you, we're going to be focusing instead on Facebook pages, which are more for businesses, organizations, and marketing purposes. So to create a Facebook page, you can click on create a page for my business on any other Facebook page, or you can go to facebook.com stroke pages. Now options vary depending on the type of page you create. You can create a page for a local business, for a brand, for an artist, and so forth. You want to make certain that you use good key terms, however, in your page name because Facebook searches still rely heavily on the actual title of a page and so if you include your best key terms in that title, you'll get better placement in searches. So here is what the creating pages uh, screen is going to look like. And you notice that you can choose from a local business, a company or organization, a brand or product, an artist, band or public figure, um, entertainment or a cause or community. And then within each of these categories there are subcategories that you can choose from. And so you want to really try and find the very best fit for the type of business, product or organization that you're creating your Facebook page for. Now once you have created your page from that previous step, you're going to click on Edit Page to change the settings. Now we're going to talk about this in more detail a little bit later, but I just wanted to point it out now that that's actually how you're going to start editing your page or changing your settings. Uh, most of the settings are going to be pretty self-explanatory. And the other point I want to make now before we start talking more in depth about pages is that you can keep your page private until you're actually ready to publish it. You can manage permissions like who can post to the wall, age restrictions, and so forth from settings. And then you can also add applications, set up mobile access, add profile images, and so forth. Again, we're going to talk about that in more detail a little bit later, but for now I just kind of wanted to give you an idea of what, what the settings area is going to look like for your Facebook page. So here is a Facebook page that's already been set up. Notice here's a large um, header area here which we'll talk about in a little bit and then here's what's called the timeline for uh, the Facebook page. So your timeline is going to show all of the posts that you've made to your page and then it's also going to give the visitors an opportunity to pull down this little area here and see things like your about page which is going to be all the information about your company. Again, I'll, I'll go through that in a later session when we talk about settings. They can look at photos and then they can also look at maybe some custom pages that you've put up and some applications that you've, that you've added to your page. Again, we'll talk about all of that sort of thing later on. But right now I'm trying to give you just a general idea of what the timeline's about and how to, how to use it. And so each of these areas here are individual posts on your timeline. It's going to show the most recent posts first. And then if somebody wants to go, you can scroll down further down the page to see older posts. But you can also, uh, users can also take a look at older posts that you may have placed. When adding updates to your page, you have a number of choices. You can do a regular status update date, you can post photos, you can ask questions, which is really just a poll, or you can uh, place a milestone on your page. Now look what happens when I actually place a link in the body of a status update. What happens is that Facebook goes and finds that link and then posts information about it. Notice you have an image here, you have a title of the post, and then you have the body of the post here and the link. Some of you are automatically going to recognize what's happening here. Facebook is looking at the RSS feed for our post. It is actually going to this URL. It's looking at the RSS feed or essentially the XML file. It's pulling out a relevant image from the post. It's grabbing the title. 
it's grabbing uh, the first X number of words or every excerpt from the post and the link and so forth. And so again, we're seeing the um, RSS feeds and XML files in, in play here. But it's very convenient to, to put um, links within your status updates and have, have them just be formatted uh, so nicely right within your timeline. And then, like I said, you can do photos, uh, which also will take you to a place where you can upload videos. Uh, you can place polls on your timeline, or you can place what are called milestones. Milestones I particularly love. One of it, uh, there's there's been a lot of people who actually don't like the new Facebook timeline, and at first I didn't because you know we're we're all a little bit adverse to change. However, once I started using it, I really started seeing the advantage, especially for pages, for business pages, because what it can do is really offer you an opportunity to tell a story about your business or your organization by posting milestones and highlighting certain posts like we'll see in a minute and so forth. Milestones specifically is a great way to show your fans what's going on with you, you know, the kind of milestones that your business may have reached or, you know, exciting news that you want to share with them and make certain minutes that it's highlighted on your page. And so to create a milestone, you're going to get a, uh, a screen like this where you can uh, it says event, but you know it doesn't have to be an actual event. It's just kind of a uh, milestone. A location, if it's relevant, uh, when you want it to show up on your timeline. You can do a year, month, or even a day. And then you know the actual story. You know what the milestone is about. And then also you can place an image up here. And then just click on save. And then it's going to show up in your timeline like this. It's going to have a nice header and a little, the little story that we put in there as well as an image. So this is like I said a great way to really draw a lot of attention to some of the things that you're that you're proud of that you've achieved in your business. Now if you click on the the little pencil here to the right of any update on your timeline you get some additional options and one option is pinned to top and if you choose that then this status update is going to stay at the very top of your page all the time this is a great way to draw attention to ongoing promotions or things that you want people to see as soon as they come to your page and then you can also uh, change the date of the, of the post of a status update hide from page delete the post and so forth. And here's what the pin to top feature is going to look like. Here's the post that we pinned and it's going to have this little bookmark here that tells you and anyone else if this is actually pinned to the top of the page. Okay now one of my other favorite features on the new Facebook timeline is the highlighting. To highlight an update click on the little star right there and it's automatically going to add it as a highlight. What it does is it makes it full width kind of like a milestone. It also adds it to this option right up here. When somebody comes to your site, you know, they could be overwhelmed with all the posts on there. But if all they want to see are the highlights, things that you've actually starred as being highlights on the page, then they can do that by just choosing highlights and then seeing all of those posts that you really would like for them to see. And then if you want to remove the highlight, you can just click the star right here again and then it won't show up in the highlights anymore. Okay, now let's take a look at the header area up here of a Facebook page. Now we have this a large image here and then we have our smaller what's what's called our avatar image which is the image that shows up whenever we do our individual status updates and also is the is the image that shows up on other people's feeds within Facebook when we post something to their page or if they share something of ours and then we have this large header image right here now this header image is something that can be customized but you want to be kind of careful what you put on it I'll talk about that in a minute and then here's the title of the page and then here's your tagline and that's just a quick you know what this page is about and then also the ability for people to like your page and you can actually look at um, um, direct messages here also and then this area down in here shows things like your photos uh, the people who have liked your page and then also shows applications that you've added to your page and we're going to talk about applications a little bit later but this is actually where they're going to show up on your page this is another feature that I, I actually like as well because it, it, it brings more attention to the applications that you have on your page instead of ma making people kind of look around on the page and try try to find them now, there are some very clever ways that you can customize the header of your Facebook page. You see where people have created these uh, large images here and actually incorporated their their avatar image in with it to make it uh, you know just a very clever header. But one of the things you do not want to do is do any 
major selling or calls to action in your header. That's one of the things that, that uh, Facebook frowns upon. So you want to have it be very representative of your of your company, your organization, but not a whole bunch of, you know, get this for free, 40% off, you know, go to our website and save all this money. That sort of uh, heavy promotion is something that's, that's really frowned upon in Facebook. But the other thing I wanted to show you before we end the session is this website right here that actually shows you the dimensions for your Facebook cover picture. The full picture and then the little avatar picture and the offsets here. So this is a template you can use to create your own custom header using Facebook or at least having the dimensions to do so. And here's the URL for that site right up here. And that concludes the session.